Okay, so continuing on with our series, we're gonna do a uh, Docker installation now. Uh, a couple cool things I'm gonna show you in this one. Uh, first of all, um, we've been using, uh, essentially interacting with our virtual machine through the uh, the virtual box kind of provided GUI. Uh, we don't actually have to do that anymore. And there's a couple of benefits of not using the virtual box GUI. Uh, so, if you've noticed, we can't copy and paste without installing guest additions and a bunch of uh, kind of a convoluted runaround to, so so essentially from host, I can't copy this text and paste it into my virtual machine without guest additions. Uh, but what we can do is essentially now that we have SSH set up, we can no longer use that. And we'll uh, maximize this. So if I connect into my SSH server, which we set up in the previous video, uh, ssh-i, how do you work and that looks correct. Yep. So essentially now the benefit of being uh, in our SSH session and on our host uh, operating system is I can copy and paste things, which is really nice when you have a big wall of things you need to type in and don't want to do it. So, which leads me to the next part, <laughs> the actual Docker installation. So I found this tutorial here. Um, I like this tutorial because it uses current branch of the actual Docker uh, repository. Uh, it's kind of a cool thing to do to install your own, uh, get to install the actual repository for Docker. Um, we're not going to use everything here. Uh, essentially, I'm not going to set up the sudo for Docker uh, group, sorry, Docker user. Um, but other than that, we're going to do everything else. Uh, so we can now test out our copy and paste, uh, which on Windows, and this is Ubuntu, Windows for listen for Linux, uh, is just right click copy, uh, paste, and paste is right click. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, also really nice for the actual shell that you get here. If you go down into right click I believe it's properties. Yeah, properties, options, use control shift C and control shift V for copy and pasting. I really like that feature. Wow. So um, we'll continue along. So we've updated our repositories. So we're getting the latest software. Copy, paste. Um, what this is doing is it's installing uh, essentially the software to allow us to make an HTTPS connection using apt. Um, it also installs curl here because it uses that to download and install this uh, GPG, uh, basically like a public private key like we did in the other videos. Um, copy. That looks good. Enter. It's good. That was installed properly. Um, so basically now we're going to add this repository to replace the uh, Ubuntu repository. Because Ubuntu also comes with Docker, but it lags a little bit behind. Um, next, sudo apt update. So we do a second update here because now that we've added this repo, we actually need to pull its updates in before we run the next portion of the install. Uh, perfect. And then now this app cache policy docker CE, this basically we run to make sure that the changes were effective. So if the changes weren't effective, this would say something like archive.ubuntu, but it actually says download.docker.com. Um, and that's good because essentially it means it's going to pull the install from here instead of from Ubuntu. So that's good. Let's clear that. Uh, let's move on to the actual installation now. sudo apt install docker ce. Perfect. Uh, actually, before I do this, because it's, yeah, it's 385 megs. I'm just going to pop into a tmux session in case I need the terminal for something. Perfect. There we go. Yes. Um, and Tmux, for anybody that doesn't know, I used it in a previous video. It's just a terminal multiplexer. So essentially, while this this uh, is busy, I can use Control-B to pop up into here and do things. Uh, one of the things I am going to do is in the home folder uh, is make a directory for, we're gonna test a Docker file here. So let's just call it test. Actually, we'll call it Apache. Good, and we'll use Apache, Apache 2. 
CD into Apache 2, perfect. LS touch docker file, good. And then vim docker file, perfect. Um, so that installation is still going. While that's doing that, we will, well actually that's done. So let's cancel out of here for a sec. We'll go down here. Uh, and just verify that the installation is successful by running, uh, there we go. So you can see that it's running here uh, as a service. We've got a, a process ID and everything, so that's good. Uh, hit Q to close that uh, and clear. And exit should get rid of that Tmux pane. Good. So now, what are we gonna do? Oh, now we're gonna basically install an actual Docker file. So we need a container. Uh, let's do Apache Docker Hub, probably something. Yes, I'm not a robot. Great timing, by the way. Which ones are cars? Um, cars, verify. Perfect. So we're gonna download this container right here, docker pull ht, docker pull httpd. Um, oh, sorry, uh, so we have to proceed all our docker commands with sudo because I haven't added the docker user to the sudo group. Um, a little bit annoying for now, but that's okay. There we go, well that's downloading. We also, so the nice thing about these docker uh, official images is, well, not all of them have this, essentially if they're in Docker Hub, they kind of tell you basically how to use them and how to install them and set them up and run them. Um, usually they'll list things like important environmental variables uh, that you can set and uh, just basic configuration options. This one's really simple, so we're just gonna go ahead and do it real quick. So we're already in our Apache 2 folder that we created earlier, uh, we're gonna vim our docker file and we're just going to type from httpd uh, and this is 2.4 perfect um, I guess I could just point this out see where it says 2.4 here after this colon this basically sets image variants so uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of different image variants but if you had a different version that you wanted to use and download you probably would change that here again refer to this file to do that uh, okay, so from HTTP, Q, I really have to disable that bell, it's very annoying. So now we need to build our image, uh, build-t, I'm going to call this one my Apache test, that works, that looks good, and here, uh, again, sudo I forgot. Perfect, that builds that and then now if we want to run it it's docker run dash dit dash dash name uh, name is what we want to call the actual container that we're going to run here so I'm going to give it a name I don't know we'll just call it Apache for now it's very descriptive uh, this dash p command tells us the uh, source port uh, so basically host and then container so the server is obviously running in port 80 in the container and then what we want it to run to on our actual host when we visit the web page. So for now we're just going to use 80 and 80 and I called it my Apache dash test. So that's the name that we created when we built it. Uh, and then I think it's just enter. Pseudo. Perfect. So we get this little, I, I refer to this as the hash. I'm assuming it's something else. I think it's just uh, sudo docker container ls so to list actual running containers for docker currently um, it's docker container ls you can see here this is the first part or a very long hash there um, so now if we wanted to drop into an interactive shell for sorry a root interactive shell for this container it's docker exec dash it um, you can use the name which is apache or you can use the, uh, I always use the first three of the hash we have here, so 00D, 00D. Uh, and then the, the application that you wanna run with exec. So for me, I'm just gonna use bash. Uh, that looks good. Sudo. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, so now we are in the root shell of that actual container. So if we look here at the Docker image, it says that, well, it doesn't say that, but this is typically where it's installed. Uh, if we go to the slash user local Apache 2 HD docs, that's where we should find uh, the root of our, our web root. So we'll go there real quick. Slash user local Apache 2 slash HD docs. Good. Uh, indeed, we have an index.html. Uh, okay, let's make that a little bit more descriptive. Oh, it doesn't have Vim. Does it have VI? Oh, we're not we're not using Nano. <laughs> um, well, we'll do this. Uh, do I need a body tag? I don't know if I need a body tag. We'll make it an H1 too. Um, slash H1 slash body. Oops. And we're gonna echo that. We're gonna overwrite index.html. Perfect. Good. Um, so now we should be able to go into our browser here and navigate to our static IP, visit it, and indeed we have the right file and we have the index. Um, one really cool thing to note here, which I like, which also has a bit of a security, implica security implication, is that we... Uh, we didn't configure access to uh, port 80 on our virtual machine. That was done automatically by the Docker file. It actually punched holes and modified IP tables for us automatically. So if we go on our main, uh, if we go back to our virtual machine here and we go sudo UFD, UFW status, you'll see we have no rules for port 80 and that happened automatically in the Docker file. So when that container comes up and that container comes down, those ports are open and closed automatically. Uh, the security implication is that if you don't know what, if you just assume that your firewall is the sole source of modifications of IP tables, then you could end up with a bunch of services running that you don't actually know are running because you just assume your firewall is good. Um, if you, actually I think that's it for now. We'll leave it there. Um, in the next video we're going to do a Docker Compose install and for that we're going to use GitHub Current Branch. And that one will be cool too. Um, so yeah, I look forward to that one. And done for this one.